Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. In Morocco, protests on the streets, mirroring protests throughout Arab Spring and now much protesting around the world. But that has a special significance, what's taking place in Morocco. And now joining us to talk about that is Feroz Manji. Feroz is the editor-in-chief of Pambazuka News. Thanks for joining us again, Feroz. Good to be on your show. So what's going on in Morocco and why is this significant? Well, I think it's, um, it's a country where it has always been said that this was going to be uh, the, the, the one not affected by the Arab Spring or the African Awakening, um, that, that um, there were, was a stable government, there was a, a king who was popular and so on. But in fact, uh, that myth has fallen apart. Um, and for the same reason that it fell apart in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Burkina Faso and, and everywhere else. And that is that they have that people have suffered thirty years of of, of a declining income, uh, privatization of the uh, commons, uh, and uh, while a small minority um, have got rich, you know the 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 ninety nine percent against the one percent, and um, it I think surprised all of us the the extent that in, in overnight in twenty cities across Morocco you had massive uprisings of people calling for the resignation of, of the so-called popular uh, King Hassan. And it's, uh, it, is, it is quite extraordinary. What kind, uh, of political for what kind of political forces are involved in the organizing of the protest? Well, I, I, I think a lot of it has been rather like what we have seen in, in, in the United States. It has been largely spontaneous. I'm not sure that there are, there are particular forces which actually seriously can claim to have, have, have organized this. Uh, I think you are seeing a, an, an eruption of citizens who are who have had enough, um, just as we saw in in in, in Tunisia and Egypt. Uh, that's not to say that there are not many political forces who are engaged uh, within that, but the, that that the, these have been spontaneous eruptions of citizens who are outraged. And I think um, it is part of the same story as we have seen in terms of uh, uh, um, the the occupying of Wall Street, the African Awakening, the Arab Spring. Now, we, 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 did, we did a story, an interview, uh, you and I, a few months ago about the, the uh, uprisings and protests across Africa, and many did. of them very brutally suppressed. Uh, what's the state of that now, uh, generally, well, across the country? Since then, it has spread to, uh, to, to Malawi, <laughs> to Botswana. Uh, we've seen uprisings again, once again, uh, just a few days ago in Uganda, where the walk to work campaign has started up again with, and faced enormous uh, uh, repression. And there are a growing number of strikes in, in, in South Africa. And uh, I think we, you know, and Morocco represents a, 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 a really a serious um, um, uprising, especially because this is a colonizing country as well. It is the country which um, what has occupied the Western Sahara, the one country remaining in Africa, which is still not free, still not independent. And, and I think there will be repercussions in terms of, of, of their capacity uh, to continue to be a, an occupying force uh, in, in uh, Western Sahara. The, the parallels are rather like uh, the occupation of Palestine um, by, by Israel and the, the occupation of Western Sahara by, uh, by, the, uh, by the Moroccans. Uh, and there again, we have, we have a lot of natural resources, uh, oil and so on, which is um, uh, in, in that area known as the Western Sahara, um, which they, the Moroccans have taken over. So I think over time we will see the, the implications of that uh, uh, unfolding. Are, are we seeing in any of the African countries the emergence of a, of a new kind of political leadership? Uh, in, in the last time we did this interview, we talked about much of these protests are directed against you know, what's called neoliberalist type of economic yeah. policies. Uh, uh, I, you know, as I, I mentioned in the other interview we did recently that I talked to some people from the Congo recently, and people are f very fed up and there's new elections coming, but they don't see an, a new Patrice Lumumba. There's nobody in sight who would no. lead a kind of new type of politics. Well, I don't see that happening in the United States either, but I think out of struggles is where leadership is formed. And I think um, uh, it will take time. We are only in the opening scenes of, a, of an emerging revolution, which is going to take many years to, to unfold. And I think it will be coming from young people. It will be coming from young women activists 
who are the most dynamic forces in most of these countries. And I think that's the transition we will see. But it takes time for those leaderships to emerge and to gain the kind of credibility and to build you know, a, 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 a system of democratization rather than just democracy based on the ballot box. You know, the old story, we get, to, we get to the opportunity only to vote once every four years. People on the stock exchange are voting every, every four seconds. And so, you know, that's the difference in the contrast in, in, in democracy. And I think the kind of democracy we need to build is one of democratizing, you know, our own societies and saying, you know, we must take control of what is produced, how it's produced, who it's produced for, and, you know, who benefits from that. And so, you know, the, the, the slogan of 99% against the 1% is, it has resonance in Africa as it does in, in New York, uh, Washington, and all the other cities uh, across the world which have been, uh, um, we've seen these uprisings. Thanks very much, Feroz. Thank you for having me on your show. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.